okay? You you redeemed yourself again. <laughs> now I have three that I like and right. two that I want to just don't. I am a huge fan of Irish whiskey and Jamie, well, she really hasn't developed a love for it quite yet, but very, very shortly, I think she will. And in today's episode, we're going to figure out what Jamie should be drinking on St. Patrick's Day. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, well, there's many, many a bourbon lover in this world and in our community who have not learned to love Irish whiskey. And what better time to jump on board to try some great Irish whiskey than St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is coming up on Friday. And man, it's, it's time. It's time for you bourbon lovers to, to take a little step, just a baby step, little baby step. And I'm going to set the example by making Jamie take that baby step. First up we have tonight, we have the Quiet Man coming in at 80 proof. This is matured uh, in old uh, bourbon barrels, used bourbon barrels. Comes in 80 proof, retails about $35, $37 most places. It's really, really mellow, really easy sipping. And I think it's a pretty good introductory bottle. So this to me smells very muted. I get like a nice lemon honey kind of sweetness. Very muted and very fresh. Yeah, it's very light. It's easy. I almost feel like there's a little bit of almost some 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 like brown sugary notes. Okay, like a very light sprinkle. Maybe a hint of a maltiness. I was about to say musty, but you yeah, said malty yeah. instead. I guess that's the nice word for it. It's almost like a really sweet, sweet grape like an overly ripened grapey mm -hmm. almost a little bit there is a hint of a berryness to it mm -hmm. definitely i get a lot of berry i get some caramel some brown sugar mm -hmm. it's all very light and sweet still getting kind of a maltiness there mm -hmm. and a little bit of burnt honey i really like that one up next we have green spot this is 80 proof irish whiskey Really, really tasty. It's matured in bourbon barrels and sherry casks and retails for right around $60. I get a, a light, a very, very light, like earthy floral note with some cedar wood, or some kind of wood. Yeah. No, and yeah. a little bit of mustiness. The, yeah. the flavor notes are super mild. Again, they're not. Getting a really strong, like, mixed fruit, like a fruit cocktail almost. Okay, yeah. I feel like I'm getting a very light proof, too. Yeah, it's really it's, easy. It's mild. Are there any rice in here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This one has a musty. It's not multi, it's musty. It's <laughs> for, a little... It's for a, sure. It's a little funky... With, okay. Yeah, it's got a little bit of like a dry spice, <laughs> oh. like a dry spiced fruit, like yeah. a dehydrated fruit, like concentrated fruit, like the hard like trail mix type fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good explanation of it. A little bit of lemon, tiny titch of pepper, maybe. A little bit of pepper. I'm getting a little bit of kind of a a single pot still like yeah. metallic-iness. It's a little more complex than the first one. Like really? it's a little more challenging than mm. the first one. I liked the first one. The first one was really good though. Up next we have Teeling Small Batch. This comes in at 92 proof. Retails for right around $40 to $45 as well. And is finished in rum casks. It's kind of a weird multi lemon mm -hmm. <laughs> I get a little bit of like that oak, but that oak is moist. It reminds me, it's almost like a crystal light lemonade, like aged in an oak barrel. It's more spicy to me. I don't get any sweet notes from this. See, I get this really nice, like white sugar sweetness. Mm -mm. Hmm. Ooh, that's really interesting. I get a grape. Yeah. The green grape, not a red grape. Yeah. Or a purple grape. A green grape with almost like a little bit of a wine kind mm -hmm. of finish to it. And then there's like a, a really kind of a spicy note. Yeah, there is. I That's the note I don't like about it. Because I had to sit there and at first I was like, hmm. And then I was like, hmm. 
and then I went to meh. <laughs> yeah. It's too spicy for me. I like the grape note, and I was actually digging it until that spice just like really... Uh, it really becomes predominantly spicy. Towards the finish, yeah. Yep. Next up, we have Red Breast 12. This 80 proof Irish whiskey is kind of the standard bearer for what most people think of as one of the best uh, introductory type of, of Irish whiskeys. It retails for right around $60, $65. Uh, it's really pretty available in most places and it's absolutely delicious. Ooh, okay. I get, so on this one, I get vanilla maltiness. It's like a chocolate ball, and it's got frosting on the chocolate ball. The vanilla frosting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I'm getting a little bit of like a cereal graininess to it with lemon, vanilla cream. Oh, that's good. That smells good. Wow, that's really good. So my first sip or my first impression when it hit my tongue was like I'm drinking water because that's how like thin it is. It's kind of thin. And then it just pulls together though and it gives me a bunch of different flavors. I got brown sugar. I got mm -hmm. that chocolate maltiness. I got a nice vanilla. Yeah. I got a lot of sweetness on it. It, it really does. It leaves me like I've been chewing some like sugar gum. I think this is the sweetest finish there is mm -hmm. from the ones we've had. And it's like, like you said, it's that sweet kind of a gum finish, mm -hmm. but I'm also getting this nice little bit of like a, almost like a hint of like a brown sugar or maple. I like on the this finish. one a lot. Jameson Black Barrel coming in at 80 proof retails for right around 40 to $45 is aged in double charred bourbon barrels. Ah, this one's really nice. Like a sweet peach. It's really fruity. Yeah, but a very in a very sweet way. Mm -hmm. It's like a honey nectar. It's like it's like ambrosia, like the the fruit salad with the cream and yeah. That's like vanilla cream pie. Is it apricots or like peach cobbler maybe? And it has this vanilla frosting on it. Yeah, it's really good. It's got a little bit of an oakiness to it too. Mm -hmm. A little bit of kind of a, a little bit of a more char than some of the other ones had. But it's got this really nice brown sugar aspect with vanilla cream. The the different the weird thing too though is towards the finish, I got a little bit of numbness, not from a proof. This one I think is the coatiest mouthfeel. It's like a film almost. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's like yeah. Very much. It's got the syrupiest and, and kind of mm -hmm. stickiest mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Number five is this guy. It was a spicy grape, a spicy green grape. And I was trying really hard to decide if I liked it or not. It was my second place. Ah. I kind of ended up liking it. It is spicy. It's but, weird. But I that like grapey it. note, I really, really enjoy. See, and I, I went back and forth between it. Number four was going to be my fifth place, but it ended up going into my fourth place since it was a funk, yucky, lemon, pepper kind of thing. That was my fifth place. And to me, it was like super musty, super funky. It's the funky kind of musty that is moist on some barrel that I don't really like. Yeah, and it was my fifth place. I didn't love it. Third place, I really liked. It was a multi-toasted marshmallow. It had honey, it had lemon. It was nice and light and actually was number one for a little while. And it, after I tasted two other ones I liked, it kind of fell. Yeah, as a first, the first bottle we tried, I thought it was really, really strong. Ended up being fourth place for me. My second place right here was a vanilla chocolate brown sugar. It... It was really good. It was really good. That was my first place. I thought it was really, really solid. I wrote down brown sugar, vanilla cream. Nice. It had a, it had a really <laughs> nice mouth feel until I got to my first place, which was this guy. It was a frosted donut. It was clingy. It leaves like some kind of clingy film. I couldn't quite say that it was chewy or it was like super thick, mm -hmm. but it had a really it, nice it experience. Left, yeah, it left it left something behind that tasted good. <laughs> that was my third place. I, I it was vanilla cream, 
thick mouthfeel. It had the oh, best mouthfeel. Oh, that was your third place? It was my third place. But again, I didn't think any of these were bad. Uh, you know, my fifth place was the clearly fifth, mm. but still really drinkable and nice. Okay, David, all I got to say is I never heard of The Quiet Man. I'm, let me. <laughs> You've never heard of any of these. Red Breast. Oh, I've heard of Red Breast. I've heard of Green Spot and Jameson. So, <laughs> so tonight we are getting ready for St. Patrick's Day to find out what bourbon lovers would love in Irish whiskey. What Irish whiskey should bourbon lovers be drinking for St. Patrick's Day? Oh, so all of these are Irish? These are all Irish whiskeys. Oh, so I picked that's out, awesome. I picked out what I thought were the you know most bourbon lover friendly five. You've never liked Irish or Scotch. Mm -hmm. I, so I picked the ones that I thought would be the most palatable to you and to the bourbon lovers out there to get Stacey, ready for St. Patrick's Day. Stacey, do you Day. see we're doing an Irish whiskey blind? I know, exactly. <laughs> for it's St. Patrick's It's Day. exciting times here on Beyond the Row. <laughs> so all of these ranged in proof from 80 to 92 proof. They're okay. all easy, easy to find for St. Patrick's Day. None of these were hard to find special bottles. And they all range in price from about 40, 42 up to about 65. Fifth place. T-E? Teeling. Uh, this guy. Okay. That was my second place. Teeling small bat. That that one is finished in rum casks. Hmm. So yeah, that's that's interesting. That's it's weird. I was getting we it were getting weird. grapey and lemonade. Don't, don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the cheaper ones. My fourth place. GS. Green spot. Oh, okay. That Green was, spot? Yeah, that was my fifth place. I'm a little surprised by that. The spot line I've tended to like. Green Spot's my least favorite by, of those for sure, and uh, being the cheapest and most affordable. But uh, yeah, it didn't stand up well. So for how me. much is this one? That one's actually about sixty sixty five. That's one of the more expensive <laughs> ones tonight, and it was my fifth place too. So oh my! Yikes! Don't spend the money, guys. You don't need to. You got some other good options. All right, my third place. Quiet man. <laughs> I was like, what does that say? So quiet man. Yep, that's finished in oak bourbon barrels. So it's actually, and that's actually the cheapest one on the list. It's uh, about $35 or so. Super easy sipping, easy to, it's easy to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not special in any way, but it's a great, great one finished in bourbon barrel. So you get some of those same bourbon notes that we love. I feel like it's been hiding over there. I actually enjoy it. I like it. My second place, RB. Red breast, 12. Oh. The legend. This is a uh, average, you normally about $65 for one of these. It is considered the standard in Irish whiskey. It's one of the best, most flavorful bottles. That was my first place, so <laughs> I did I, I did detect that one. Um, it the, was really good. I liked it a lot. It was really really nice. It it's kind of funny because this one was like my first place, and then this turned into my first place, mm -hmm. and then this guy happened, <laughs> and that turned into my. And so no surprise here because Jameson. Yep, is, Jameson's a legendary distillery. The Black Barrel is. Is that your third? That was my third place. Really, really good. The best mouthfeel of the night by far. Mm -hmm. And this is actually finished in double charred bourbon barrels. Mm. So they take the bourbon barrels, they rechar them a second time, and they put this in there. And it is a great mouthfeel, super, super caramel, tons of vanillas. Vanilla. That's what I get out of long. this one. This is like a vanilla milkshake to me. And I like a vanilla milkshake. Yeah, this was a, I think this was a good lineup. Um, if you like kind of more traditional bourbon, the Black Barrel is really, really nice. I think the reason I like the Teeling so much, and it came in second for me, is because of it, it's more scotchy. Yeah, it has some Maybe more of those what I don't, I don't iodine. Like. Yeah, those iodine and medicinal notes, which don't bother me, but you you're, you don't like it all. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it was second for me, but you did not like it at all. I liked those notes, and it was really well balanced. And then the red breast in, is my first place. It's just a, a classic. It's amazing. Wow, David. I guess everybody, if you're ready for St. Patrick's Day, this is what you should be drinking. Uh, the Jameson Black Barrel is honestly one of, and for $40, $42, $45, it's one of the least expensive options. And it is a great representation of an Irish. If you guys like what we're doing here on Beyond the Rope, please subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button if you love leprechauns. Go check out my new channel. It's called Dog Row. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Smash that like button if you like wearing green on St. Patrick's Day. If you guys want to go check out... Um, <laughs> I'm an a-hole. Well, I just want to know if you're really going to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. My underwear. Day.
now that I know that they're not high proof, I'm like, okay, I can drink fast, you know. Mm. Why, would I, why would I pick up the funky one? 